Moving on down here, this is the, the famous fire shelter right there. Like being inside of a baked potato and, and every few years they get bigger and heavier. And this is a chunk, multiple pounds. What does this thing weigh? Three, four pounds to pack around on your pack. The packs are designed around them. Uh, you talk to guys like Mystery Ranch that, that design Wildland specific firefighting pack and say that the challenge is, is to design around these things. Some people have a different, tra a different idea. The Australians, for example, I, I've heard that they don't use them. And they believe uh, that uh, if a guy thinks that he has one of these, that he's, it gives him a false sense of security and he's going to stop running and get overran and is more likely to get burned up with one of these. And I have to go, I'd have to go with that a mindset. I would prefer not to carry one of these at all. Um, I, I would prefer to take my chances and, than, than, than to get into one of those. But uh, that's a whole other discussion. But how it works is uh, it rides low in the pack and you rip these deals off and and you shake it out and you crawl inside of this thing and it's got mica and all that and and you've all seen it before right so this is a large they come in large and, and regular sizes uh, i'm six foot four to 210 pounds and i fit better in a large than a um, a small so i carry the larger one even though it's a little bit extra weight um, you're going to carry fusees these are like torches um, or road flares but they're a little bit different than that they, they have they tend to drip uh, they drip and they're really good for, we can start burnouts, back burns. You could, in an emergency, if a fire was going to overtake you, you could burn out a spot, a million different things. I've actually used these a lot on fires. What's also a little bit different is that you, they've got uh, little uh, openings in the back that end up getting crushed or you can't really use them very well. Uh, so you can, you can stack them together uh, and make them long, which is nice if you're lighting grass on fire. You don't have, you don't have to bend over so far. These are kind of the smoke jumper style. They're a little bit shorter, and I find that they fit. They're harder to find, but I find that they fit in the pack uh, better than, than the long ones do. When I, if I can't, can't find the short ones, I'll actually take the long ones and I'll cut them down to a normal size so they're not so big and just wax the end. Uh, you can make your own. Uh, right here, earplugs. Best earplugs ever made, the sound guards. Uh, the green, or these are the... I'm kind of getting out of frame here. These are the... Uh, uh, little foam spongies. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, some safety pins, some heavy-duty safety pins. I've never used them. I don't really know why I carry them. I guess I thought that I, I just needed that. Uh, I'll just leave them in there. A signaling mirror. I, I use this for putting contacts in <laughs> if you, contact comes out. But primarily, you can use it for signaling aircraft. A fall-rated locking uh, beaner, something that you can repel off of. Uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's very likely that I'll be doing any repelling on a fire. What's more likely is I use this to lash my pack on the back of an engine so it doesn't fall off and I get somewhere and I don't have a wildland pack. Uh, that's primarily what I, used it for, what I use it for. These are agency radios. This is not typically what we're going to use on a fire unless it's local. Uh, we're going to be issued Bendix Kings from our department. We'll take those. That's the, the universal radio for wildland firefighting. 50 feet of par paracord um, and this little uh, pack bag is just how I put everything together. And then snacks are really important. Remember, this is a 24-hour bag. This needs to su supply you for... Um, well, for 24 hours, so you choose what you want. I take one of these big Costco beef jerkies. That really uh, improves the mood when you're starving. Um, some gel uh, for instant energy, which is just a high sugar. Um, the blue, uh, Cliff Bars, the Blueberry Crisp cl Cliff Bars are actually power bars that I think are pretty tasty. Um, some little treats, like a, I like paydays and some nuts, and then some high protein whatever you want it doesn't make any difference i mean you, you, you want it remember how much you want to eat for 24 hours this is pretty bare minimum you're going to be hungry uh, but you're not going to starve so at least you give you some energy all right let's move down we're almost done here okay so also this is something that i learned from the forest service and i resisted it at first and i thought that is stupid the, I mean, are you kidding me? You're going to carry a full-size, like, old-school, your granddad's space blanket? Remember these? <laughs> the silver on the side? Well, I've come to change my mind on that, I'll tell you, absolutely. And this is the first thing that goes in my pack for so many reasons. A perfect example, if, if we do another video, I'll talk about sleeping bags. I have a sleeping bag that's pretty light. And I was on a fire late in the year last year, and I was freezing. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep at night because I was so cold. I couldn't get warm. And then it dawned on me, after, the, after a miserable night, I, I remembered the space blanket. 
And so I went in my pack and I got it and I got in my sleeping bag and I wrapped myself in that and it was amazing, the difference. I was slept warm and like a bug in a rug. Uh, also, I've been out on fires where I've showed up at five o'clock at night and taken the night shift and away from the engine or get dropped off somewhere, uh, watching or look out and freezing to death. You know, you've got, all you've got is the clothes you put on when it was, when it was warm and you've sweated all, all day and you're wet and you're freezing. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be cold. You don't have to be cold. cold. Being cold is just for lack of planning um, and having this. I saw a Forest Service gal one time that was, had a, was, was in the middle of the night on this windy exposed ridge, was wrapped up in one of these, and I thought, yep, I'm, I'm going to carry this. Many different things. You can use this as a litter. You could carry out with some buddies or someone that was injured. You can use it as a panel to, to uh, notify aircraft or to mark a, draw, a, a, a LZ. Uh, lots of different things. Uh, it's great. And it's, yeah, it's bulky and it's a little bit heavy. It goes in my pack always. Handkerchief, I'll carry that. That will go in my back pocket. Um, I'll wear them around my neck typically because uh, of sun. If you're getting a lot of sun later in the day and it's scorching the back of your neck, you get a bad burn, you can kind of wrap that around. It gives you a little bit of relief. An ultra, ultra light fleece beanie. Yes, I know that this is a synthetic and I talked about not having synthetics but this is not something I'm going to wear on the fire line. If I'm working by the fire I'm going to be warm. It's the, it's the time where you're going to be out away and it gets cold. You lose a tremendous amount of heat through your head and this weighs nothing and it brings so much comfort. You've even got burns in it for being around fires on there. And then merino. Uh, merino wool. This is smart wool. This is a, a upper a long sleeve smart wool top and this uh, doesn't weigh a lot and when it gets cold this is wonderful you mix this in with a hat and you put that rain jacket on which you have you can stay really really warm all your buddies will be freezing and you'll be nice and warm and comfortable and what the nice thing about the wool is this is if you do you know if you're going from where you're working really hard and then you're you're, you're idle and you're hot and you're cold hot and cold wool is the very best for that it uh, doesn't hold moisture as like cotton does. Cotton, when I used to do mountaineering, they said, we always told us cotton kills. Because when cotton gets wet, it loses all of its, um, its insulating value and it doesn't dry out very quickly. Wool, on the other hand, even if it's soaking wet, still will insulate a fair amount. So wool is, I, I'm, I'm becoming a, such a fan of wool that I've get, got it getting rid of everything and I'm pretty much wearing, anything that is in contact with my skin is gonna be wool. Uh, the, this is not the wool of, of the old scratchy wool back in the day your granddad wore. This stuff, this new stuff from like Smart Wool or Icebreaker and several other companies is incredible. Incredible. All right, uh, finishing up here. This is uh, my water bladder bag. This is uh, integrated into the pack, um, and this is three liters. Three liters is absolutely minimum. Uh, for a fire. If I go out on a, if I'm going to be out away from the engine and I've got to carry my own water, I'll carry six liters. I'll double this. Uh, this is a three liter. It's integrated. Of course, it's, you know, the camelback style. This is kind of like the military version. We'll go into the pack, uh, which I'll show you here last. We'll finish up with the pack. Um, and then I can uh, use that to hydrate throughout the day. <clears throat> Problem with these things is twofold. One, it's very difficult to meter your water. If you're new and you're not an experienced hiker or firefighter and you're working hard, you'll drink your water and then you'll suck on your straw and it's one o'clock and you're out of water and you're screwed. Because you, you didn't know, you don't know how much you went through. So that's very dangerous. The other thing is the eggs in one basket theory. These are prone to fail. Even these heavy duty ones, I don't, I mean, they're, they're pretty much military grade, uh, but still something can happen. And if you get a hole in it, that's it. It's gone. You have no water. So some guys don't like these for that reason. So what I do is I, I have it, but I don't rely upon it. If I'm going to go over the hill, uh, I will throw in my backpack uh, extra water bottles. We have wa water on those fires by the pallet. Water and Gatorade, it's everywhere. You can grab a handful of those, throw them in there. That way you can meter. You know, you know, you grab one, you know I have... If I have um, six one liter water bottles and I've drank three of them, I know that it's half gone. So there is some wisdom in that. So you'll have to, you'll have to make that decision. I have to have a pack that's super flexible that fits multiple rolls. And this is part of that system. 
uh, which I'll show you here in just a minute uh, why, why this is important to me. And lastly, this is a shower, basically body cleaning towel, a shower in a bag. This is like a giant industrial strength uh, baby wet wipe uh, that's huge. It's 24 by 48. It's like a big towel um, that's pretty nice uh, after being in soot and fire all day that you can wipe off, take your shirt off, and you can give your, get yourself cleaned up a little bit. It's worth the wait, even if you just keep that in your red bag. All right, let's move on to next to your boots, the most important thing, which is the Wildland Pack. The Wildland Pack. In my opinion, I think there's no question, this is the best Wildland Pack, or the best manufacturer of Wildland Packs there is. There, no, nothing else compares to that, and that's Mystery Ranch. Remember Dana Design, the old the, the Dana stuff, the backpacking gear? Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know all the names, but the guy that uh, left, or that he quit doing Dana, uh, started making, started Mystery Ranch. These are made in Bozeman, Montana, uh, all USA made, and they are the finest wildland packs in the world, no, no question. Very specific to a task. And there's not just one size fits all with packs. I mean, there's, they all do share one, you know, some co common attributes, but they're very specific towards your job role or your particular duty of what you're doing. So based largely off of the latest uh, backpacking te technology uh, with adjustable shoulder straps, of course, and really heavy padded hip belts that all came out of backpacking, but these are all custom sized to the user. You know, for me, for example, you know, I have a small waist. I'm, I'm, 30, I'm a 34 inch waist, but I have broad shoulders and that and, and a up, big upper body, so that makes me a, an extra large pack. So what you can do, like you can see here, this is a medium belt. Uh, with an extra large upper pack. So you, it's important to have that size. Another common a attribute of wildland packs that make them different than anything else, sorry, make sure you're in frame here, is the way that the weight is carried low on the body. And why no other packs that I know of are like that is because you're working. You need to have that range of motion up here and you need to have that weight down low on your back because you're bent over and you're working with the tool all day. You can't have, you have to have your back and shoulders free. And so they carry their weight very, very low. Another thing very specific to Wildland Packs is they're going to have good ones. They're going to have two huge cargo pockets on the side, left and right. You can see right here. And he's going to have enclosures on them. The reason why is you have to be very adaptive. You have to be able to carry fuel, uh, maybe fuel bottles. You might be able, to, I, I have had these things stuffed with uh, hose appliances and gated wires and nozzles and fittings. Uh, you have to be able to carry all that stuff. And so it, what it is, is that everyone has these or most good packs going to have these, um, and it makes people very versatile. Uh, the other thing that's gonna, it's very different from this pack, this pack is set up for more for an engine guy, which, it, which is what I am. I'm going to be responding on, responding on a Type 6, um, and if I am uh, tied to an engine, do I need a big pack like this? Because you have to have this on whenever you're, let's say, 10 feet from the engine. Uh, you have to have it on all the time. So if you're in and out of an engine, in and out of an engine, do you really need to be carrying this huge crew bag? Well, no. And so what's specific, what's so nice about this one, rather than it all being so, sewn up and, and everything stitched on and, and not modular, is if you look and see here, there's light gray buckles and there's black buckles. If you see a light gray buckle, these mystery ranch guys are smart like that. You know that that is going to separate the crew bag from the mothership. You separate those, those deals there and you pull on this, right? And then you get rid of, give me no trouble there. Then you get rid of that crew bag right here, right? So that's, it, I, I don't need that, right? So what do I need on a fire if I'm attached to an engine? Well, there's a couple things that I have to have. I have to have a fire shelter. So this is the fire shelter compartment right there. So if you look on the bottom, you see there that the fire shelter is going to go in there and it's going to be, so I can, I need to be able to reach around and grab that thing without taking my pack off. So that goes in there. A couple other things I'm going to need that I never want to be without. Fusees. So my fusees are going to be in here uh, at the very back and low, which is nice because, you know, if there were a fire, you know, they, one of them were to spark off or fire or who knows what, it's the furthest away from me and I'm protected by the pack on it. It's very, very clever. Also, there's going to be a small pouch right here that I'm going to be able to put snacks in. This is my favorite part. They, they made this 
fit around that shelter deal so I can put a full length IFAC in there. Now I'll throw in uh, whatever things that I need, you know, maybe some extra batteries, maybe some food primarily. If I'm near an engine, I just don't need a lot of stuff, right? And so now I have that. Now water, how's the water work? Well, that's why I have this, this pouch here that I was telling you about, why it's so important, is that this, this is the housing for the bladder pouch. Now this is gonna just snap on here quickly, so now I can run hydration with it, right? Run hydration with, with the, the, the lighter version of this pack. So that's kind of how that works. So that's, I've done videos on this. You can go watch those if you want to. Uh, just in closing here, uh, I'm gonna keep my radio here. I used to wear, wear my radio on the chest and I, that was, that's kind of an old school thing. I don't, a lot of guys don't do that anymore. It's, it's, just, it's not very handy and you get too, you're trying to work and you have that, you bend over and the radio thing hangs down. What we've, most of us have went to is putting the radio on the belt and using a remote mic. So what I'll do is I'll, is I'll put this on the belt. You know, I'll usually have a king radio in here. I'll put this on here and then I have, uh, I've got these, uh, these guys, what do you call these things? These little plastic carabiner deals uh, where I'll run in the back and I'll run the cord up through and now I have a microphone up on right up here. Just, you know, you've all seen that before. So if I'm running a saw uh, or it's really noisy, I'm around marked pumps or engines or things are running uh, that I can bend down and I can communicate and hear having that. It's, it's, I think it's better than the chest rig, uh, without a doubt. So that's what I run. Uh, and then of course, here's the Camelback deal. Now I have an admin pouch on the front that I've added that it's very handy. A lot of guys don't do this as well. And this is where I'll keep either a GPS or, or the Kestrel. Uh, so it's kind of protected because those two instruments are, are delicate and very expensive. Um, and I want to access them and I'll, I'll also lanyard everything. Uh, the only other thing that I have on my pack, I keep things pretty slim and trim. I'm not, don't like a, not want to have a big bat belt on. Is I'll carry a, uh, this is for my Leatherman. Uh, and I didn't show you that, but I think the best Leatherman of all of them is the Leatherman uh, Wave. It's a, when it comes down to price and usability and useful tools on it and size and weight, I think this is the best one. And I'll lanyard this on so I don't lose it. I, I, I need it for other things and I do steal it out of my wildland pack in the winter, but that will go back in here and that Leatherman will go on there. You know, because I don't, I, I've got to make decisions. I can't carry, I'm not going to double up on things. I'm not going to carry an EDC knife and I'm not going to carry an EDC flashlight because, you know, I can use my headlamp. You know, you can one open these things. They're, they're really nice. Uh, then you have a knife and you've got a saw and you've got pliers and you've got cutters. And of course, this is not a, a Leatherman ad, but that is essentially uh, the, the Wildland Pack. So that's it for the 24 hour bag. So you probably noticed that I have paired, a, I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff from the last one of these that I did. And I think I was thinking about that. The reason why is that uh, before I, I was really stuck on an engine and I had weight was not a consideration. I had uh, packed everything around in the truck and I didn't have to worry about it. Last couple of years, um, I've spent a lot of time on hand crews and working as a sawyer um, and pulled out of the engine to do line, more line work. And, and man, that pack got heavy uh, right away. That stuff, went, that, that stuff went away quick. So all of, all of the boot repair stuff and all that nonsense, you know, the way I look at it is, uh, you know, maybe if you have really crummy boots, you might want to bring that, but I take care of my boots. And if there's, you know, do all that stuff in the off season and make sure that you're all squared away. And so you don't have to pack all that stuff. But this is a, this is, it may seem like a lot of stuff, but there's nothing in here that I consider to be frivolous. I, I have, um, there's a lot of years of experience uh, that have went into this. Um, and for me, in my role, uh, these are things that are, are necessities to me. Yeah, there may be a little, there's maybe a little bit of comfort in there and you could, you could get more Spartan if you wanted to. Uh, but I guess the way I look at it is that, uh, I, I'm not as hardcore as, as some of you guys might be with this because I'm, um, uh, I, I'm a volunteer for this uh, and I'm, I'm probably not going to go out on a 14 day deployment. Uh, I could uh, at any time, I could stay as long as I've wanted. Even two years ago, I was out for, for beyond that. Um, but I, I, I have a choice, you know, I, this is not my full-time job. And so I, I'll probably say, um, I'm happy to go out and help um, as a volunteer and, and I'll go, I can go out, I can give you seven days and I'll pack for that. 
um, but I'm probably not going to stay 14 unless there is a, a life safety issue. Unless I mean, we're, it really it really starts getting desperate, and of course I would stay for, I would stay for that. That's why I've made some changes in my campaign bag where I typically packed 14 socks, 14 t-shirts, 14 this and that. I've pared it down to seven because I've already decided in my mind that I, I'm going to give you, I'll give you guys seven. Uh, that's, that's as long as I want to stay away from home. So, uh, yeah, but it, it all changes. So uh, this was, I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's probably very, very long. It's probably very, very boring uh, for most of you. So I don't know if there's interest in going into the campaign bag because it'll probably be just as long. Oh, no, it won't be as long, but anyway, let me know in the comments. If you want to see that, I'll be happy to do it as well as the saw your kit. Maybe we could roll those into one, but if there's not a lot of interest in this, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to waste my time and yours. So I think this is important to get out there because I have seen uh, young firefighters that are showing up on the fires and they are woefully unprepared. I mean, it's just, it's sad. I, I, I would like to take to task some of these fire chiefs or whoever it is that are, are equipping these guys uh, for fires and setting them out on campaigns with crap boots, with crap socks, uh, with not even a sleeping bag, guys sleeping on the gym, you know, rolled up in their dirty shirt. It's just, it's, it's terrible. It's just stupid. So if uh, this, for noth if nothing more is a public service announcement for um, your agency. So if you want to use this video, uh, and, and share it uh, to help your guys get prepared, um, go ahead, just ask my permission first. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.